Good morning to everyone. Um, we'd like to thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, so Sorry for the late um, start, but uh, we waited for everybody to arrive and uh, we can uh, eat into the coffee break a little bit later on. Um, so, some of you might know me, I'm Thanos Peturis, I've been asked to uh, chair this session and uh, I'm doing my <coughs> PhD at SOAS on um, uh, the, the South uh, Yemeni or South Arabian uh, independence movements uh, in the 1960s. Uh, we'd like also to welcome you on behalf of the um, uh, academic forum um, Sorry, let me, so the Academic Forum Muhammad Ali Lukman. This is, uh, I believe, the first uh, event that the Forum organizes in London. Uh, as many of you would know, uh, it, is, um, it has been founded and, and based uh, in uh, Berlin, in Germany, but uh, it hopes to open up its activities beyond uh, the borders of Germany because um, uh, the, the the object of its um, activities uh, is South Yemen uh, and South Yemenis around the world. Um, so a few words about uh, the forum. Uh, it is named after Muhammad Ali Lukman, uh, who, uh, as you know, was one of the leading intellectual uh, personalities of uh, British Aden. Um, and I would personally place the forum within that South Yemeni Adeni tradition of uh, creating these spaces of open discussion that uh, Mohammed Lukman himself and others founded in, in Aden as far back as the 1930s. Um, the forum was established in, in April 2018, and the desire of, of uh, its founders is to, to establish uh, a platform for. Um, uh, intellectual exchange on topics, on all topics that concern South Yemen. <coughs> Very rightly, Amira uh, was telling me that um, when we discuss about uh, South Yemeni politics, we focus too much on the political elites and looking at uh, what uh, particular personalities are, are, are doing. Uh, and um, uh, the Lukman Forum is trying to look beyond this and to discuss uh, grassroots activities, to look at the, the history uh, of uh, South Yemen from, uh, from the bottom up in, in terms of uh, what, what the local, uh, the, the local population um, does. Today's workshop is uh, going to provide you with an overview of current events uh, in, in South Yemen. And uh, we will do this from uh, a, a, kind of a historical and a grassroots uh, perspective. Uh, we will, our discussions today will span the era from uh, the sort of end of the colonial period to, uh, uh, to, 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 to today, uh, after the, the war that started in, in 2015. Um, and we will be discussing on, uh, with a particular focus on uh, civil society uh, and the role of local and international media in the way they re represent uh, what is happening uh, in the South at the time. Um, I won't keep you any longer and uh, I believe you all have the uh, information uh, on, on the forum and, and the proceedings of today. And I would like to uh, start with um, our first speaker, Huda Lukman, who will be speaking to us about what she considers to be the golden age of, of Aden uh, of the 1950s and uh, 60s. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Firstly, I'd like to thank the Muhammad Ali Lukman Forum for inviting me to uh, talk today. It's a great honor to be here. As time is limited, I'll only be able to cover um, a short brief or snippets of a time that um, is more of a longer story. I have chosen the following to talk about. Life in Aden during the 50s and 60s. My father and his campaign for education. Education, that's from a personal account. My mother and her charity work, the Aden Women's Association, al Gamaya al Adaniya al Nisa highlighting how much work was achieved by women in that era. And then the final years. These are in short points to 
cover the time often referred to as the Golden Age or as Zaman al Gamil. During the 1950s and 60s, Aden experienced an economic boom driven by British investment in the colony by its armed forces. The British needed an expanded garrison town for strategic purposes. As a result, times were good for many, especially for those in business. However, my father, Muhammad Ali Luqman, believed that this situation would be relatively short-lived and was conscious that the benefits of the boom did not reach the poorest of Adani society and certainly did not benefit the people living in the adjoining sultanates and protectorates. My talk will just cover my own personal experience of the colony in the last few years of the British occupation. My father repeatedly urged the British to invest more in the people of Aden. As a result, he was often regarded by the British as a troublemaker. He was sacked from his first job as a headmaster in a government school because of his disparaging comments in the Bombay Times in 1923, when he wrote an article under a title called, Is This a Scrap of Paper? He criticized the British for the lack of education in the colony of Aden when more than 50% of children could not read or write and had no school to attend, especially in the protectorates, where only a few privileged were able to attend school in Aden. Through his newspaper, he campaigned for essential improvements on such matters as housing, sanitation, and education. He advocated the establishment of university scholarships, and as a result, many of the most able students traveled abroad to qualify as engineers, lawyers, and doctors. Previously, a university education was only available for the elite families and for those who could uh, self-fund it. He initially wrote to heads of states in the Middle East, asking them for help. The first group to travel abroad to study included four of my own brothers, who graduated from universities in Cairo and Iraq on a self-funded basis to study. Later, others were able to travel to the UK, initially self-funded. As the program developed, there were grounds for people for hope about the future, as father's vision was that these educated individuals would secure positions of authority in an independent Aden. Following the end of the World War II, the British gradually increased investment in the colony after their withdrawal from India. One such development was a new maternity clinic in the 1950s. I was one of the first in the family to be born in hospital. All previous births, and for the majority, um, for many years, traditional home births were the norm. So from the very start, I benefited from the changes that were coming. This was a time of progress and hope. New schools, of course, the famous Queen Elizabeth Hospital, which became the teaching hospital for the region, were signs that things were getting better. Photographs and posts from that time, from that time indicate that Aden was the Dubai of the age. Some refer to that time as the Golden Age whilst the Gulf states were still backward in comparison. Father was a Renaissance man. He encouraged and supported my mother to do charity work. She worked hard to raise funds and money and secured substantial donations from other wealthy countries and from local businesses. With the funds raised and donations, she was able to purchase land and construct a purpose-built home for the Women's Association of Aden, which she had established for local women in 1957. The building was completed in 1964. It had its own theater, cinema, a nursery school, adult education classes for reading and writing, arts and crafts, dance, and equipment such as sewing machines, etc. The association provided a place for women to attend group cultural and educational events and outings. With donations of zakat money, the association helped many poor families Prior to the completion of the building, the women used to meet at our house in Quetta. Women in that era enjoyed a freedom in a traditional liberal society in comparison to women in the north, the Gulf, and Saudi Arabia. I believe this continued up to the period of the unification with the north. Mother, mother maintained a high profile in society, attending many functions and events, visiting prisons, and from the charitable funding and members' fees, she was able to sponsor families and children 
of prisoners to, in, to enable them to go to school, as well as providing food and clothes, offering support to the women in prison with simple things such as washing, clean clothes and food. She became the chairman of the Red Cross, representing the women of Aden. She was involved in local new businesses and the launch of many. She was the first woman from Yemen to enter the United Nations with my father in 1963. Unfortunately, after independence, the building was raided and its contents were destroyed or stolen. Today, the building is used for weddings and other functions by someone who took over the property. Mother was truly Aden's first lady at that time. In the 1950s and 60s, education in Aden was based on the British system. Primary schools were from four years uh, for four years from age six or seven, then intermediate for three years, and after that secondary school for four years from age 12 to 13. I sat for the government entrance exam, similar to the 11 plus, which qualified me to move to, on to Aden Girls College in Kormaksa, which was equivalent to a grammar school. This was a refurbished barracks with a large school hall, a purpose-built modern stage and theater. In my time, it was run by a British headmistress. Teachers were from UK, Sudan, Egypt, as well as a few newly qualified Adani female uh, teachers. School buses were provided from various locations for boys and girls. There was also a new purpose-built secondary school in Khormaksar for boys. Girls who did not pass the entrance exam at age 12 could attend secondary schools, equivalent to secondary modern schools in, in the UK. There were also other centers, such as the St. Joseph, Al Padre, and the Raja Manar Institute, and the Anthony Bass Center, where they taught skills such as typing, shorthand, creative writing, and crafts, and sewing, in addition to other core subjects, such as English and maths. In the final years of to the end of the 60s, as street violence became more frequent, and schools were shut, like many other families, my father decided to keep me and my sister at home and have us tutored privately. In, me in March 1966, however, my father unexpectedly died whilst he was in Hajj in Mecca. Under extreme dangerous times, my mother fled to England to join her sons who were just finishing university. She left the house and all our possessions in the care of someone who later ran away when the house was raided. Then in November 67, the British handed over power and abandoned the colony. This had immediate consequences of, uh, for the family. All private property was nationalized by the new government, and my brother Farouk, who was uh, running the two newspapers, was asked to hand the keys to the press house with all its entire contents. The rest of my brothers were ordered at gunpoint to leave their posts. The new government did not want any of the educated or the elite families to be part of the new Aden. As a result of this hostility, there was an exodus of many qualified Adanis who my father had hoped would build a new Aden. At a critical time, Aden lost her best sons and daughters who moved abroad and later helped develop the rising powers of the Gulf. The diaspora is now worldwide and ex-Adanis have achieved renown wherever they have settled a success which is carried on by their children and grandchildren. If my father had lived to see what happened, he would be disappointed, but not surprised. He wrote extensively, and his thoughts were preserved in his newspaper, archives, and in his books. He is now a subject of much academic study, and many modern Adanis often express sadness that his early hopes for the future was dashed by events. But he would probably lay the blame on the British, who ignored his pleas to improve the lot of the poorest Adanis, especially the protectorates. If the British had been far more seeing and generous, perhaps history would have, would have followed a different course. Thank you. Thank you.